I'd like to now take you through the creation of a digital asset that we will then load up into Unity. Along the way, I will show you how to install the plugin into the Unity project and also how to interact with the asset inside the editor. Here we have a pipe set up using Houdini's node-based workflow. Let's look at how it works before we save it out as an asset. Here we have a curb that's being swept along to get the pipe. Uh, then we break down the pieces to get the flanges and merge all the results together. You can see that by manipulating any of the parameters on the nodes, we can update the whole system and the flow of data is maintained throughout. So now that we have a system like this that, that allows us to even move the original input curve like this, uh, we now want to make it something that we can share. Now we could just give the scene file to someone, but if we take this and wrap it up in an asset, it works even better. So we're going to take that, we're going to make new digital asset, we're going to call it pipes, just save that into the same location as the scene file, and we press accept. Now this offers us a chance to build an interface for this asset. Uh, we can just simply by dragging and dropping, notice we don't have to write any code for this, we're literally dragging and dropping attributes from the parameters below. And if we want, we can give them new names uh, and make them a little more artist friendly. Uh, we can also take uh, one of these nodes, let's take the original curve node, and we're gonna make that an editable node and we'll see the advantage of that later when we get into Unity. As you can see, here's the top level parameters, the radius and the flange inset and we want to be able to do this inside Unity. So here we are in Unity. Now the first thing we have to do when we have a new project is import the engine package. And this will not only import everything, but also add a menu item at the top called Houdini Engine Unity. We can take that and say, load Houdini asset, bring the pipe asset in, and here we go. So this is the same asset we had in Houdini. You can see we can move the points on that curve that we made editable. We can even add points to the curve to extend the pipe and make it uh, bigger. We can change the flange inset, we can change the radius, and all of that is updated. Now, what's happening, like we talked about before, is under the surface, Houdini Engine is using the Houdini libraries to make these updates and deliver them to the host. And this gives us you know, our first experience using Houdini Engine. While the pipe asset used a curve to control the shape of the resulting geometry, you can also set up your asset to take advantage of a painting interface. Let's take a look at another asset which uses this approach to set the scale of barrels scattered over a surface. So here we have an asset which has, lets us control the number of barrels, sort of the relaxation of the iterations, um, the noise height here. And this is made with a network, uh, similar to what we've seen before. It's currently locked because the asset is locked. So what we're going to do is we're going to make one of those nodes, the paint node, an editable node. And this will help us both in Houdini and in Unity. Now we say, save that. Uh, let's save the asset again. And what you'll see is everything is locked now except for that paint node. So if we select that paint node, we can now paint the p-scale of those points to get the result that we wanted. And we can increase or decrease the number of barrels on that. If we load this asset into Unity, here we have exactly the same asset. Uh, you notice the parameters we had before. Uh, we can set iterations. We can change the size of this if we want. Uh, all, the, all the controls we had before. Now the question is, how do we do the painting? So we open up Asset Options, click on Enable Editable Node Tools. And now we get this interface where we can go and say, let's set the paint value to 2 and the opacity to 0.1. And now we brush and we start to get the scaling. Uh, of those points here inside Unity. Now, in addition, we can use this other option, this edit option, and this will allow us to specifically pick points in the scene. So we grab a bunch of points, we set the value, let's say, three, and they will automatically change. So we can use the paint interface or we can just grab things directly. Uh, other than that, we just go in and paint away to get the result that we want. So in addition to using curves as inputs, uh, you can use other geometries input. You can also use the painting interface uh, to get interactivity in the Unity environment. Next, we're going to explore this guard tower scene, which has been built using procedural assets created in Houdini. This scene was created by Kenny Lammers, who has created a set of tutorials available on SideEffects.com where you can learn how to build these assets from scratch. So the first asset in this collection is a stacker asset, which allows you to bring in an object, in this case, the barrel object, uh, and then it is going to get copied to points 
uh, within, within the asset and set up for stacking. So you have at the bottom just a grid uh, that then has got some noise set on it just so it, it, the, they aren't stacked too evenly. And then a whole bunch of nodes that will process this information, uh, create the stack, merge everything together, and create the result that we're looking for. So here we have the nodes inside the asset, sort of the procedural flow of data. And then up above we have the, this is the asset. This is, the, this is what we're gonna see in Unity. As you can see, we can control the rows and columns of that. Um, you can also point to a different object if you want to point to, let's say, a crate or something else. The stacker asset would actually work with that as well. So when you've got a digital asset, uh, you can use that many, many, many different times. And here is an example of that. We have one stacker already used in the corner, and now we're going to work with a second one. We set the number of rows and columns, and notice how each time the asset is used, they don't have to have the same values. They can be put in different places in the scene, use different values, but at the core, they're all referencing the same asset down below. So here we're adding even another one in. So this one, we're gonna go in. Now, by default, it doesn't reference the barrel because you have to pick the object uh, now we're going to pick the same barrel, but we could have picked a different barrel or a different object and stack those instead. So again, we get that in, we then get to control its size and so on, and there we go. Now, once you have that, we can also do something called make a prefab. So let's say that you wanted to use your procedure asset, but you wanted to deliver the results to the game level um, without the engine present. A prefab would allow you to share this with other uh, level designers and they would be able to work with that and it would not have the procedural controls anymore, it would be flattened out but it would also take advantage of the of the instanting capabilities of prefab so it would be efficient from a pipeline point of view um, but independent from the engine. Of course you don't need to set, bake out prefabs or bake out anything you can just use the, the assets in your scene as long as everyone on your team uh, has an Houdini engine license available. So here are some other assets Kenny used for his um, guard tower scene. Um, so you can see, you know, there's networks and nodes that involved with coloring it, shaping it. Uh, again, we're using a curve interface to, to, to position it and get this to work the way we want. Um, here we have some sandbags also created using the same interface, drawing a curve uh, and getting the result that we want. Here's a, a ladder to control the number of rungs. With everything procedural, it gives your level designers a lot of flexibility to make the decisions they want. Here's a guard tower. How tall do we want it? We can play the game a little bit. Oh, we need it to be a little taller. We want to see it from the distance. All of that can be controlled when you're working with procedural assets. If you have several guard towers in the scene, they don't all have to look exactly the same. They can be based on the same structure, but still look independent. Give a little more visual richness to your, to your, to your level.